Hey, what's up guys? It's Tibbs and it's been a couple of weeks now since my previous video. That is obviously because I've been neck deep in the classic WoW beta these past couple of weeks. You guys might not know that I've also been moving IRL, so things have been notably hectic on my end too. I'm um, just, you know, getting situated, packing everything and getting ready for the move has taken a lot of my time as well. So I apologize to all of you guys on YouTube for that. Um, miss you guys a lot and hopefully I'm going to try to make up uh, to you guys for this in a pretty long video today. And the topic of the video today will be a comprehensive review of the classic WoW beta thus far. So just to give you guys a little bit of background information, the classic WoW beta came out on May 15th, which was approximately 12 or 13 days ago. Um, I was in the beta starting from day one and I've been playing it pretty much every single day, streaming it live on Twitch since then at twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. If you wanna catch the beta footage live on Twitch, you wanna see me playing it live on Twitch, you can pretty much click on the link in the description below. Chances are I'm streaming right now. So uh, maybe you could stop by, say hi, we'll hang out for a bit, and uh, I'll show you guys the experience that I've been dealing with over the past couple of weeks. But yeah, it's been out for approximately two weeks, um, and the format of the beta was the following. It has been a closed beta, meaning that the invites are basically invite only. Um, not everybody has access to the beta, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. And there are no beta keys. I know some people have been sending out links to redeem beta keys and stuff like that. If you get a link like that, guys, that is a phishing attempt. Um, people are trying to key log you or something like that because there are no beta keys per se. Typically what Blizzard would do in the past with betas is they would distribute a certain amount of keys to like fan sites like MMO Champion or Wowhead, or they would send them out to content creators and stuff like that to pass out to the community. That is not the case this time. The only way you can get into the beta this time is if you opt in on wowclassic.com, go into your battle.net settings, change the opt-in settings, and if you are awarded the beta, you will actually see it come up in your battle.net client, and I think you'll receive an email from Blizzard as well, although I'm not sure. But that is the only way to get into the beta right now. There is no kind of stream key giveaway or anything like that. Anybody that's saying there is, is uh, trying to scam you in some way or another. Um, so as far as I know, this is the first time they've used this system, at least to my knowledge. Uh, they might have done this in the past, but as far as I know, during the BFA alpha and beta, there was like beta keys that you would actually get, although your account could also be flagged too. Um, a big controversial part of the beta, it seems like you have to be subscribed to get in. Although I've heard numerous accounts, numerous people telling me that they were not subscribed to World of Warcraft and still got into the beta. So I'm not sure what the case is there. I don't see any incentive for them to lie to me about it. I've heard like nine or 10 people tell me this. So it'd be kind of strange for all of them to be lying. Um, but Blizzard publicly in a blue post has said that you have to be subscribed to get into the beta. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but it does seem like some people that have not been subbed have been able to get in. So interesting food for thought. The level cap for the beta is level 30. Um, the world itself is open beyond level 30. You can go to pretty much any zone you want. We've had people go to Silithus, try to zone into Encourage. We've had people go to Winter Spring. All over the world is open, but you physically cannot level past level 30. After that, your experience locks and you're pretty much stuck there. Um, personally, I wish the level cap was raised at least to level 40, but we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, but I think level 30 is a really, really good starting point because... Level 30 is when all the classes get their kind of mid-tier or like first major talent point. Like Warriors get Sweeping Strikes or Death Wish or Concussive Blow, uh, stuff like that. That's pretty much when you get your first tier of like major talent points. And it's created this pretty interesting meta that, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of atypical. I mean, you usually don't level to 30 for like twinking or anything like that. It's a very odd level to twink at. But the way it is in the beta right now, it's created this very interesting meta where everyone's leveling to 30, getting fully best and slotted with all the dungeon gear available, and testing the limits of each of their classes by pushing high dungeons like Scarlet Monastery Armory and Cathedral and stuff like that. So I think overall it's been very positive, but I do hope that in the next couple of weeks, I do hope that level cap does increase so we can unlock more content and ultimately test more content because after all... That's what a beta is all about, right? And uh, that brings me to the third point of the beta format. Very few invites, uh, noticeably few invites. The other day on stream, I was doing slash who every single level. So like slash who one, slash who two, slash who three to get a head count of just how many people were online at the time. 
and we got around 642 Horde members were on at the time that I did this test, which was pretty close to prime time, I think. I don't think it was too late or anything like that. Um, it might have been a little bit later than usual, but it was pretty close to prime time. And to my understanding, it seems like Horde has a slightly higher number of people playing online at times than the Alliance. So if I were to take a random guess, it seems like the concurrent player count on the server at prime time is anywhere between 1,200 to 1,600 people, which is very, very interesting. That's pretty small. Um, that's actually less than the amount of people that could play concurrently back during Vanilla WoW uh, on the original servers. So I'm not exactly sure what Blizzard's mindset is here, but there do seem to be very few invites overall. And... Again, more controversially, it does seem like streamers and content creators have some kind of priority, at least from the outside looking in. A lot of streamers and content creators have gotten into the beta, and that has resulted in some pretty big and, in my opinion, pretty justified community outcry. Um, I don't want to come off as a hypocrite here. Obviously, I'm a content creator and streamer. Obviously, I got into the beta, so you know I got to be thankful to Blizzard for that. But at the same time, I wish a lot more people got in, not just streamers and not just content creators. And I'll tell you guys why. Admittedly, and uh, I don't want to condemn myself here, but I'll be honest with you guys. Um, admittedly, when I'm streaming, and I'm sure when other streamers are streaming and making videos and stuff like that, unfortunately, we are bound to our audience. And we are bound to entertaining our audiences and making sure everybody in the chat's happy and having a good time. Testing things like armor values on specific mobs or repeatedly testing hitbox zones and stuff like that on stream is not exactly the most entertaining experience. So as a result, a lot of streamers typically instinctively tend to shy away from the actual testing um, in lieu of pursuing more spectacle oriented gameplay like organizing huge world PvP raids or, you know, getting the world first X dungeon or the world first, you know, whirlwind axe and stuff like that. Um, we typically prioritize doing things that we think our audiences will enjoy over actually testing the game. And I consciously try to stay away from that. I've been personally doing my best to test the game and report as many bugs as I can. I've reported over 30 bugs on the beta so far, and I'll get to the bug section in just a second. But at the end of the day, I know inside me, sometimes I'll be doing something and I'll think to myself, hmm, something wasn't quite there. Maybe I should test it. But then I'll be like, well, I, I don't know if people want to watch that right now. So let me just, you know, go do this world PVP raid or something like that. And uh, that's a problem. Obviously, that's a big, big problem. And with so many streamers getting priority access over non-streamers, I feel like the beta isn't being tested to the degree that it you know, probably should be. And, um, you know, my only plea is to Blizzard, please let more people in. Let more people that aren't streamers and content creators in. Let people that just want to test the game and make it the best gameplay experience possible. Let those people in. People with experience in vanilla that have played for years. People that have played on private servers for years. That, you know, know all aspects of the game or at least are very familiar with certain things to test here and there. Those people should definitely get in because at the end of the day, guys like me and other streamers and content creators, as much as we want to test, and believe me, I want to test things, at the end of the day, we're at the mercy of our audiences in many ways. But that being said, that is the beta format as of now. That's pretty much how the beta has been functioning so far. Uh, but let's move on to the actual beta experience. And I've got a whole list of things I want to talk about from the beta experience to the bugs that I've seen, things that have shocked me, communication with the devs, the stress tests, moving forward, all that stuff. So I'm just going to go through these one at a time. Again, this is going to be a lot longer of a video. So um, if you guys are working on something around the house, feel free to put this in your in your headset or something as like a podcast. Um, the visuals on stream or on the screen will just be there kind of just, you know, for the people that are watching. But uh, yeah, I waited 10 minutes to tell you guys that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, anyways, the beta experience. Starting off with the gameplay. As I said in my first impressions video, and I cannot harp on this enough, I will continuously repeat this because it's something that's indescribable unless you're actually playing. The game is incredibly smooth. 100%. It just feels so smooth, so buttery smooth, much better than on private servers. From the moment you log in, it's just like, yep, this is better. This is something better than what I've been playing over the past few years. Um, 
almost all the quests that I've done, I think all the quests that I've done actually are working. Um, escort quests, you know, unique scripted quests, all that stuff. They're all functioning properly. I've done a ton of escorts. The RFK escort works. Uh, the um, the Whipper, not the Whipper tubers, uh, the Blue Leaf tubers quest works, which is something that's, you know, sometimes it bugs out here and there on private servers. Pretty much all the quests that I've done work perfectly and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, I've noticed, however, that leveling does take longer in Classic WoW than on private servers. And if you ask pretty much everybody, and I think I've actually heard Joanna say this as well, Joanna, the world record champion back in original vanilla when it came to speed leveling, um, the consensus right now is that leveling in Classic WoW is much slower, or at least I'd say between 10 to 20% slower than on private servers. And the reason for that, I think the big three reasons are the following. The first one is that quests typically have lower drop rates in Classic WoW than on private servers. The first thing that I noticed uh, when it comes to this is the Plane Strider Beak quest. On private servers, I think it has something like an 80% drop rate for the beaks. Classic WoW, it seems to be much, much, much lower than that. Um, the second thing is that the mana regen rates in Classic WoW seem to be lower at lower levels than on private servers, meaning that casters are taking a lot longer with their leveling as well because they're having to drink more frequently after pretty much every single mob pull. Um, I know that friends of mine that, you know, have gotten to level 30, I'm sorry, to level 10 in like an hour and 45 minutes on private servers are taking like two hours and 15 minutes or two hours and 20 minutes to get to level 10 on the Classic WoW beta. And finally, most importantly, and most relevantly to Classic Launch, is the fact that Classic WoW does not have a dynamic spawn system, meaning that all the mobs in the game spawn on their original vanilla spawn timers. For the majority of mobs in vanilla WoW, that spawn timer was five minutes, but named mobs and rare mobs and other specific mobs here and there, like elites, uh, a lot of those mobs had even longer respawn timers. So a boar in the Valley of Trials might take five minutes, but you know this named NPC for X quest might take 25 minutes. Whereas on private servers, dynamic respawns are typically there throughout the world and mobs spawn a lot faster. And so do nodes like mining nodes, herbalism nodes, chess nodes. Those typically spawn a lot faster on private servers as well. Whereas in Classic WoW, they're pretty much all static. And that obviously creates a much, much slower questing system. Um, this is going to be crazy on Classic Launch. I mean, there's only like 20 or 30 boars in the Valley of Trials. Imagine a thousand people going after 20 boars or 30 boars for the Cutting Teeth quest. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we haven't seen this before on private servers, man. They usually implement dynamic spawns there and mobs pretty much as soon as they die, come right back up. That's not going to be the case in Classic WoW. It looks like we're getting layering instead, which I'll talk about later. But yeah, it's going to be absolutely chaotic for sure. And it's going to result in a much l a slower leveling system. Uh, moving on to dungeons. Dungeons in Classic WoW, unlike leveling, are much easier than they are on private servers. Uh, private server elite damage appears to be much higher. Um, I don't know exactly why that's the case, but it just seems to be that way. Dungeon mobs in Classic WoW seem to do less damage. Bosses seem to do less damage. And aggro radiuses in dungeons, as well as aggro radiuses in general across the world, seem to be uh, a lot smaller in Classic WoW, meaning that mobs don't aggro quite as easily. So overall, this has resulted in a much easier dungeon experience. Um, we were doing RFK runs pretty much like at level 29 and 30, fresh 30, where I was able to pull four or five elites at once and tank them with a two-hander. No sword and board, just a two-hander. And do that relatively easily. So definitely not something you can do on private servers. Um, I know there was a bug with like Stone Skin Totem or something like that in the Classic WoW beta that was resolved. But overall, it seems like mobs are doing less damage in dungeons then on private servers, so dungeons are a lot easier, and that could potentially translate to the leveling meta, which, uh, who knows? Who knows if dungeons are going to be more viable for leveling? I don't know. Uh, in terms of the actual game world, the game feels much more alive in Classic WoW than on private servers. There are more NPCs out in the world. There are far more critter patrols, like a bunch of gazelles running in the barrens. Um, there's more mob patrols, you know, like Orgrimmar guards on uh, wargs and, and wolfback. 
uh, just patrolling all over the world that I haven't seen before on private servers. The world just feels much, much more alive. Um, just, yeah, more NPCs everywhere. Again, every quest I've done has pretty much worked. Escort quests are working flawlessly from what I've seen. I'm not sure if any are bugged or notably bugged, uh, but the ones that I've done are all working. The Thousand Needles one is working just fine. Um, you know, all the ones that I've done have been working. Overall, in terms of a gameplay experience, this does not feel like a normal beta. It feels very close to a finished product, at least when you compare it to previous World of Warcraft betas. Um, the one that I can draw from experience on is the Battle for Azeroth beta. I will tell you right now, the classic WoW beta is in a much better state this early on than the BFA beta was. In fact, I would say that the classic WoW beta is in a much better state right now than BFA was at launch. Uh, it feels like a much more complete game. There are bugs, there are a ton of inconsistencies here and there, but uh, it does feel like a very close to finished product, which is an absolutely fantastic thing. And uh, hopefully Blizzard keeps up with the updates that they've been releasing every couple of days. I mean, they're just churning away, ironing out all these bugs at a very, very fast rate. Um, in terms of Battlegrounds, I skipped this one on accident. Let me just go over it real quick. Uh, we've had Warsong Gulch released on the beta so far, and I will tell you Warsong Gulch has been absolutely amazing at level 30. It's been really, really fun. Uh, the wall jumps are there. I'm not sure if all the same ones still work, but I know a couple of wall jumps work in, uh, in Warsong Gulch, which is a big deal. Uh, a lot of the skill cap of that BG in Classic WoW or in Vanilla WoW comes from being able to land those jumps. So a lot of those are working. Uh, the BG itself is functioning properly. You know, no timer. We had an hour long War on Gulch the other day. It was super fun. Uh, got a crazy amount of killing blows. It was really, really fun. So yeah, the BGs are working as intended and feel just like how they should feel, in my opinion. Um, and in terms of gameplay, finally, it feels like Blizzard is operating off of a timeline similar to but not exactly the same as the phase content release schedule that we've been promised for classic wow so blizzard originally launched the beta with no honor system i believe and no bgs but a couple of days ago over the weekend they introduced both the honor system and warsong gulch so now kills are being recorded and obviously we've been able to test warsong gulch and it's been a blast and stuff like that and it looks like upon reset we might be able to have access to some of the early honor rank gear like the insignia trinkets and stuff so hopefully that means that blizzard will presumably continue releasing new content on the beta hopefully they will raise that level cap up um, hopefully they will add more bgs I'm not sure if they'll let us get to level 60 and start raiding, but that would be pretty cool from a testing perspective. But I'm not sure if Blizzard wants to reveal that content before launch. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, it does seem like more and more content is being released as we move on. But overall, final thoughts on the gameplay experience. Uh, again, very, very solid. Feels very polished. Um, yeah, I, I very difficult to complain in certain areas. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I think overall the gameplay experience, if I were to rate it out of 10 so far, I'd say an 8 or a 9 considering the stage of beta we're in, which is, you know, day 13, very, very early on. That being said, it hasn't been perfect. There have been plenty of bugs, plenty, plenty, plenty of bugs. I myself, as I've already stated, have reported at least 30 bugs, probably more. I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to go back into the streams and see how many I reported. But I've reported a lot of bugs, uh, anything from, you know, the maps being broken when you take a Zeppelin to auto running after a flight path lands. Uh, there's an instant lock, an instance lockout bug where you where you were allowed to enter unlimited amounts of instances in a one hour period, which got changed, hot fixed recently. Um, there was a bunch of warrior related bugs when it came to abilities like charge and stuff like that stance dancing a lot of those bugs have been fixed um, mobs fleeing too early and permanently in black fathom deeps uh, there's a very popular bug right now where in black fathom deeps you know you'll kill certain mobs and they'll still be at 50 percent hp they'll bug out and they'll start fleeing at 50 percent hp and just run everywhere um, and keep you in combat until you kill them. It's a very popular bug there right now. So uh, that one I reported as well. Um, and overall mob behavior bugs, you know, certain mobs being stuck in the ground and stuff like that. Stuff that you still see in WoW here and there. But uh, a lot of those a lot of those bugs still exist in the game and have been reported. 
And as I said, many of the bugs have been fixed, and Blizzard has been very, very active in terms of getting things fixed pretty fast. As I said, the instance lockout bug has been changed. You can only enter five instances per hour now, as was the case back in vanilla, uh, which makes farming stuff a lot slower, as it should be. That's how it was back in the day. Um, again, they fixed a lot of the warrior bugs that have reported. Um, overall, they've been fixing things pretty frequently, and hopefully they will continue to do so. Now, fortunately, uh, it seems like some things that I considered bugs and other people considered bugs based on their private server experiences, it seems like those things are not bugs. And some of these things have absolutely shocked me, starting off with the low elite damage. So I'd say the biggest place where I noticed this was in Black Fathom Deeps. Uh, there's the little like brazier event before Akumai, the final boss of that dungeon. Basically, what the event is, is uh, you click a brazier. There's four braziers surrounding the statue of Ashara. You click each brazier, and every time you click a brazier, it spawns a wave of mobs. Defeat all four waves of mobs to unlock the door to Akumai. One of those braziers summons turtles. And on private servers, this wave is known to be very, very dangerous. And if I remember back in vanilla, it's been 14 years but I remember this being a lot harder back when I played vanilla back in the day. For whatever reason, these turtles do not shred you in the same way that they do on private servers and that I think they did back in vanilla. If my memory serves me correctly, which at this point, I'm completely disregarding. The Mandela effect is so powerful. It's very hard to discern what happened when, but, uh, but the cases in classic WoW, uh, these turtles are much, much weaker, much weaker. And this applies to pretty much, you know, all dungeons. Elites are doing very little damage, and I thought it was a bug. I and many others reported this as a bug, but it turns out, and Blizzard has verified this in multiple ways, uh, it turns out that the elite damage in Classic WoW is accurate. 100% accurate. And again, there was a small bug with Stone Skin Totem continuing to apply after it was removed and stuff like that, which helped reduce damage. But yeah. So apparently that bug has been fixed and the damage that we're getting from these elite mobs is right. So that shocked me, like absolutely shocked me. Um, the next thing that shocked me is the hitbox sizes. And to be fair, this shocked everybody. <laughs> like I'm still shocked. I'm still not 100% convinced that this is right. But in classic WoW, the hitboxes are much larger than on private servers. And I've got to believe they're much larger than they were during original vanilla to the point where you can run in or you can auto attack uh, a Torin hunter that's like 10 yards away from you, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. There was a really popular clip that was taken, I believe on Perplexity's channel of two hunters trying to auto attack each other. And because hunters have a naturally larger hitbox than other races, they were literally able to auto attack each other from like 15 yards away which cannot be the case. There's no way. Blizzard has told us that the hitboxes seem to be working correctly, but unless, like, I never noticed that in original vanilla, like, it just it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't seem right, and everybody's on the same page with this right now. The hitbox thing just does not seem right, but at the end of the day, Blizzard has the original 112 reference client. We don't, and so if they're saying it's right, then it's... It's very hard to argue with them because, again, we've seen our memories be proven wrong time and time again. The Mandela effect is very, very powerful. And there were things that, you know, so many people in the community were swearing were wrong in Classic WoW that ultimately turned out to be right. And Blizzard provided the evidence in video form to back it up. So at the end of the day, we just kind of got to accept this. But yeah, the hitbox thing shocked me big time. Uh, the next thing that shocked me was the guard mechanic. Now, I'm not sure if this is a bug or not. I reported it as a bug, but it seems like there are a lot, a lot more guards in Classic WoW than there are on private servers or than there were in Vanilla, according to my memory, which, again, is a weak thing. Um, yeah, when we uh, we had this big you know, battle, uh, we, I call it the Whirlwind War. We, we battled Asmongold and kind of stopped him from getting his Whirlwind Axe on that first day. Um, during that battle, we all jumped into uh, Refuge Point, and obviously all the guards swarmed us, 
but there seemed to be a lot more guards that would spawn immediately than than I remember you know seeing on private servers. Um, it feels like it's the BFA guard mechanic, the modern WoW guard mechanic, which I think does spawn a lot more guards. And I remember that was changed a couple of expansions back. So I'm not sure if that is a leftover of the 8.0 client or not, but I reported it as a bug. But that shocked me big time because basically as it stands right now, you cannot invade any city or any town with guards because you immediately get swarmed from every direction. Um, but yeah, those are the, the three big things that shocked me personally that appear to be Blizz-like or supposedly are Blizz-like. Who knows? Um, but that's the word that we're getting from Blizzard. And there's still a few things that I think need to be addressed on the beta in terms of bugs. Uh, the big one is, you know, just all the small UI bugs here and there. The leftovers from the, the BFA client. Um, I've already mentioned these before in previous videos, so I'm not going to get into it too much. But yeah, all those little small, you know, incongruencies between the original vanilla WoW interface and the, uh, the, the BFA interface. So that's pretty much it when it comes to bugs. Overall, I think Blizzard has been doing a pretty good job at fixing bugs at a pretty good rate. They're pushing out, you know, new updates to the beta every couple of days. A new build seems to be coming out. So overall, they're progressing and, you know, we're trying to do our best to report as many bugs as possible. But again, I will advocate one more time. If more people got into the beta, more testers got into the beta, um, I think it would be better for the overall experience. So Blizzard, please, 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 if you can get more people in, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, I understand there's probably a lot of constraints, maybe financial constraints and stuff like that. I, I don't know what goes into it, but I feel like it would make the game a lot better if maybe at least double the people that are in right now were in. Um, but yeah, that's just my plea to Blizzard right there if they watch these videos. Um, moving on from the bugs to the communication with the devs. And I feel like this really pairs up nicely with, with the bug situation. Uh, overall, during the beta, the devs have been communicating like insane amounts, like a lot, a lot, a lot. We've been getting hit with a blue post every couple of days, it feels like. Uh, blue posts updating us on, you know, new builds that they're pushing or updating us on things that, you know, they're confirming are not bugs or things that they're confirming are bugs. It seems like just the blue post frequency has been really, really high with the beta. And it feels like we're always connected to Blizzard and they're connected to us. And it feels like they're watching all of our streams and, you know, all of the posts on the forums very closely to see what comes up, which is really, really cool. It's actually something that I noticed at the Blizzard Media event a couple of weeks back um, while we were playing the game and just testing the game. It seems like it seemed like there was a dev like literally overlooking our shoulders like all day, every day. It was crazy. It was like they were just watching like hawks. And the second we would be like, oh, wait a minute, something's wrong here. They would immediately poke their heads in like, wait, what is it? What is it? What's wrong? Tell us so we can fix it. So um, it's cool to see that that attitude has carried over into the actual beta phase. They're definitely on top of things, I would say. Um, and yeah, you know, they've been they've been communicating their hot fixes. Those hot fixes have been coming out very fast. And the GMs themselves have actually been participating in the beta to the point where GMs have been porting themselves around the world. And, you know, one of the most famous GMs, or he's actually a senior software engineer at Blizzard, is Omar Gonzalez. One of the major reasons why we got Classic WoW is this guy. He's been everywhere in the game. I mean, I've been seeing him all over on people's streams, hopping in. He's got a huge, you know, human, uh, uh, human model. And he'll just check in with people, whisper people, see how they're doing. Um... It's really, really cool to see that. That reminds me a lot of the old Blizzard from back in the day. And I will tell you, the classic WoW experience feels very old school in that regard. It does feel like Blizzard is kind of channeling its old self again. And uh, hopefully that that's good, not just for classic WoW, but hopefully good for modern WoW and, and all of the other Blizzard games too. Uh, so yeah, the communication with the devs so far, I would give it an A+. Um, I don't feel like you know they've, they've been cutting short. I feel like ever since like February, these past three months, in general, the communication has been through the roof, and I can't really ask more from that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the beta experience so far. Uh, I'm going to move on to the stress tests, which were also part of the beta, but technically separate. So uh, in case you guys didn't know, Blizzard has the beta, but they're also allowing a larger number of people into these stress test weekends that they've scheduled out 
I believe originally one was supposed to be in May, one was supposed to be in June, and I think one was supposed to be in July. However, it looks like they're adding an extra one in May this coming week, which I think was not intended originally. And uh, basically the goal of this stress test is to stress the servers, pack as many people into one location as possible or several you know, small locations as possible and test out you know, their server infrastructure. And uh, the major thing Blizzard has been testing out, it feels like, during these stress tests is their layering system. Their layering system is the current proposed plan to deal with the influx of players at Classic launch and to hopefully create a smoother launch experience than we had back during original vanilla. Basically, the TLDR with layering is um, it's kind of like sharding. But instead of, you know, having just a few amount of people in an area before getting sharded off, you have two to three thousand people on an entire single continent of Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor um, before, you know, you get split off into another layer that populates with, again, another two to 3,000 people and so on and so forth. It's kind of an abstract concept. It's hard to explain, but, uh, but basically it means that you'll be able to pack a lot more people into one server than having to open up, you know, a thousand servers for classic launch. I tested layering pretty extensively during that stress test. And I will tell you that there are things that need to be improved. Um, the things that I noticed right away, you can get layered while you're in PVE combat. So if I'm in PVE combat and somebody invites me to a group, it's a friend of mine and he's on a different layer. And I take that invite, even if I'm mid combat with you know Sarkoth and Valley of Trials, it will port me to the other layer immediately and I will drop combat and lose that mob. However, you are not ported during PvP combat, and we tested this out in a duel. If you are fighting with another player in PvP combat, you will not be layered off, even if you take that invite, which is, uh, which is a good thing in my opinion. A lot of people were scared that people would exploit layering by dodging world PvP ganks and stuff like that. That will not be the case as of now, as it was during that stress test a couple of days ago. Um, we did know or we did learn from Blizzard that they learned a lot about layering during the stress test. So while it did not go very well, in my opinion, in terms of, um, you know, it seems to be very exploitable as of now, I should say. Uh, it sounds like Blizzard has found a lot of different ways to hopefully reduce the amount of exploits you can do with layering. And so much so that they have actually decided to schedule an additional stress test this week. And that's where we will hopefully see some of these improvements. So um, I've got a lot of opinions on layering as of now, but I feel like it's kind of premature to talk about it because I feel like the system itself is not refined yet. And uh, so I'm going to wait on making a layering video till probably after the second or third stress test. Once we've seen it a couple of times in action, hopefully in its final form, that is when I'll make my video on it. Uh, hopefully that will be you know much less biased and uh, much more complete video at that time. The biggest problem with the stress test, however, was that people could not get in. A lot of people were un unable to get into the stress test. Now, technically, that's pretty much um, pretty much expected, in my opinion. Um, the whole purpose of a stress test is to dump on the servers. And if the login servers can't take any more people, well, that's pretty much exactly what you were going for. Um, that wasn't the problem. In my opinion, the problem was that it seemed like streamers got priority access into the stress test now this is not confirmed by any means but it seemed like a lot of the streamers on twitch were in the stress test while other people that were logging in at the same time were unable to get in and again you know i talked about this at the start of the video um i understand why you give priority access to streamers and again as a streamer and content creator myself uh i i i've benefited from this personally and uh, i feel very hypocritical even talking about it but I feel like I feel like streamers are great marketing tools and stuff like that, you know, all that stuff. Um, but but you need some more balance, you know. You need you need testing too. It's great that you know it's 2019 and betas can be used as marketing tools. That's totally fine. I don't mind that. But you have to balance it with actual testing because if classic WoW beta ends and there's still a bunch of bugs in the game that could have been discovered by non-streamers and non-content creators. That would really, really suck. So, again, I don't, I don't know how it works. Maybe, maybe streamers weren't given priority access. Maybe they just got lucky. I don't know what it was, but, uh, but it would be nice to see a lot more non-content creators participating in these events as well. Um, you know, there are people that have played this game since day one, 
and that have been subbed to World of Warcraft for 10, 12, 15 years plus. And they're not getting into these events. And it just something about that doesn't sit right with me. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's Blizzard's call. Um, and finally, with the stress test, the really cool thing about it was that Blizzard summoned some very interesting mobs into the world. Once again, channeling old Blizzard from back in the day, channeling the old classic WoW beta devs. Uh, they actually summoned Cthune in Elwyn Forest uh, on Asmongold's stream. And it was absolutely insane. It was so funny. You know, he instantly kills everyone with his eye beam. And on the Horde side, they kept summoning like a million hoggers, which was really funny too. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. It was just, it was fun, man. It was fun. And it's really cool to see Blizzard kind of laying back, cutting loose, and, you know, not treating everything super, super seriously. That's what made Blizzard so special, I think, back in the day, for sure. But yeah, looking forward to more stress tests. Hopefully, you know, zoning in on that layer rank, testing it more rigorously this next time in these next couple of days. Uh, that's definitely what I'm looking for out of these stress tests. But overall, I feel like, again, considering that was the first one, I feel like it went pretty smoothly. But then again, this is the perspective of somebody that got in. A lot of people that didn't get in would probably say the opposite. So it's just my perspective. Um Moving on to what I would like to see moving forward from Blizzard with regards to the beta and the stress tests before I go into my final topic, which is more meta, uh, talking about Classic Wild's impact on Twitch and the industry over these past couple of weeks. So moving forward, what I would like to see more of. Truth be told, uh, more of what Blizzard's doing. I think overall they are uh, they're treating the beta right i think they're they're fixing things very fast they're communicating with the community they're cutting loose in a lot of ways hanging out with us in game and stuff like that that is absolutely fantastic again the one the one criticism that i would have is more people should get in in my opinion um people that have been playing this game for a long time that have been loyal to blizzard that have you know spent years and years and years of of, of subscriptions on the game that have played since vanilla I mean, all those people. I mean, even new people. I mean, if if it were up to me, everybody would play, dude. <laughs> Every, just get everybody in. You know, just throw up 100 servers, get everybody in. It'll be totally fine. Let's just launch the game now. How about that? Uh, you know, it, it would just be nice if more people were playing. That's the big thing that I would say. Um, what would also be nice, in my opinion, is, you know, if, if there were more servers, just at least a couple more servers. And the reason why I say this is right now in the classic beta, there are two servers. There's a PVE server and there's a PVP server. And pretty much all of the streamers have consolidated on the PVP server. And because there's such a low population in general in the game right now, it's created this big kind of monolithic streaming culture on this server, which has produced a very warped and I feel like not representative experience of what classic WoW will be like for most people that play it in August and beyond. And um, I feel like the streamer culture on the server has kind of inhibited a lot of testing. It's prohibited a lot of, you know, things being done in the world. Because if X streamer is getting his group of people, his, his fans or whatever, to help him with something, all of a sudden, nobody else can test that one thing because that streamer has dominated that point. That is exacerbated by the fact that there are a lot of streamers on this one server. You've got Asmin, you've got Soda, you've got Asfen, you've got myself, Sony, Venruki, C Everybody is playing this thing. Stacey, everybody's playing this thing. So imagine pockets of streamers and coalitions all over the world dominating certain things. All of a sudden, if you're not a streamer and you're not part of these coalitions, you're literally not able to test a lot of what you want to test in the game which is creating a big problem, in my opinion, in terms of testing. And again, this is a beta at the end of the day. I, I personally feel like the goal of beta should be to test and improve the game. So it would be nice if we had more servers that were less streamer dominated so people could go on those servers and test things without having to worry about this person and his posse and that person and his posse and stuff like that. I think it would just result in better testing overall. Um, the next thing that I would like to see is removed respec costs for the beta. Now, this is a big problem that I've suffered from personally uh, a lot. Uh, so uh, in Classic WoW, if you guys didn't know, back in vanilla, uh, respecing your talents was actually pretty expensive. 
Uh, the first respec, I believe, is one gold. The next one, I think, is five gold. The third one is 10 gold. And I think it goes to either 20 or 25 and then 50. Like, it's very expensive. And at level 30, at level 30, 50 gold is a lot of gold, man. It's, it's not, uh, like, at level 30, that takes you a long time to get. So the problem that, that I've experienced and I experienced this very fast because I wanted to test all the specs, is that uh, I've already reached the point where I can no longer afford the respec cost, and that's preventing me from testing a lot of things that I want to test. Things like, you know, Slash Sit and Rage and stuff like that, um, you know, Crit Reactive procs, stuff like that. I was testing those at the start of beta, which caused me to respec several times, and now I'm stuck in this prop build that I was testing, and I want to test other things that, that keep coming to my mind. Oh, wait, how will this, you know, reaction work with that? And how will this interact with that? How does this talent work in this situation? It doesn't work like that on private servers, etc. Can't do that. Can't do that anymore. Uh, because I'm basically like just totally like enslaved to this gold price. And this goes for pretty much everybody that's playing right now. Everybody's on the same page with this. I feel like for the beta, respect costs should be removed exclusively for testing purposes because there's a lot of things that we're simply unable to test out because we can't afford to respec right now. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's a little bit of a shame, honestly. I hope that gets removed, but we'll see what happens. And finally, the last thing that I would like to see moving forward, uh, at least off the top of my head, I'd like to see the level cap raised, obviously, specifically to 40. Um, at level 30, you know, you get a lot of interesting things. You get that talent point. Uh, a lot of classes have kind of found their stride by level 30. But it's really at level 40 where things start to change in the game. Because that's when you unlock your final talent point for your primary talent tree uh, for most classes. Uh, warriors typically will unlock Mortal Strike or I guess Bloodthirst if you're specking Fury. But you'll unlock Mortal Strike, which is a big change to Warrior Combat. You'll also unlock Whirlwind at level 36. You get Pummel between 30 and 40, I think 38. You get uh, Berserker Rage at 32, I think. You get Plate Armor at level 40. You get, obviously, every class gets their mount at level 40. So that changes things a lot. And it opens up a lot more dungeons to be tested and stuff like that. Um, I hope that the level cap is definitely raised because 30 feels kind of restricted right now. And yeah, there's a lot more things that we can test out if we were level 40 for sure. And level 50 and level 60 if Blizzard wants to take it that far too. But yeah, that's pretty much all I want to see moving forward. I mean, overall, it's been a pretty smooth experience, I will say. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the Classic WoW beta two weeks in. I hope I haven't been rambling too long, but the ramble is about to continue right now on a much broader topic. So if you guys were curious about my beta thoughts, that's pretty much it right there. Um, if you want to check me out on Twitch, you can check me out on twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby to watch the beta live in the description, yada, yada, yada. But now I'm going to move on to a much more meta topic, and that is Classic WoW's reception, or at least the Classic WoW beta's reception right now in the community, its impact on Twitch, and its impact on the overall gaming industry 13 days into the beta. So if that's something that's interesting to you, stay tuned and we'll talk about it. And uh, I'll start off right away, guys, with its reception. Across the board, I think Classic WoW's reception has been tremendous, man. Everybody is falling in love or re-falling in love with this game once again. I can't tell you how many videos I've seen from content creators that, you know, six months ago, 12 months ago, three years ago, were absolutely against legacy servers and were absolutely against Vanilla WoW coming back. All of a sudden, playing Classic WoW and realizing the air of their ways. And, you know, Venruki, for example, has, you know, made an incredible video a couple of days ago talking about how, you know, he just, he became a believer after playing Classic WoW. Um, he wasn't a fan of it originally, but after seeing it, experiencing it, playing it once again, he's on board. Um, guys that, you know, were skeptical of Classic or, you know, weren't sure how it was going to perform, also changing their minds and making videos about it and falling in love with the game again. Uh, it's been amazing to see that, man. It's been absolutely incredible. I've heard some people call those individuals, you know, opportunists and sellouts and stuff like that. I'm the type of guy that gives people the benefit of the doubt. Um, if somebody says they don't like something and then they try it and then they like it, 
I mean, you know, like, look, I didn't like shrimp until I tasted it for the first time, right? So uh, I, I, I think, you know, most of these people, in fact, pretty much everybody that I've spoken to about this stuff seems very genuine in their response. And I think that's a great thing because classic WoW, dude, it's so lovable. And uh, once you play it, it's amazing and you fall in love with it. And it just it's such a wholesome experience that uh, it's, it's just great to see everybody falling in love with it again. Um, so yeah, the retail WoW community has been falling in love with it. I've seen the vanilla WoW community has loved it so far, albeit, you know, we're pointing out a lot of the bugs here and there. The industry reception has been crazy. I mean, the articles that have come out of like mainstream media outlets like IGN and PC Gamer and GameSpot, like all of these guys who were skeptical of the game are now falling in love with it again. And it seems like everywhere a classic WoW goes, <laughs> everybody falls in love with it, dude. It's like Daenerys Targaryen. Everywhere it goes, dude. Everywhere it goes, everyone loves it. Um, but hopefully it won't, you know, uh, you know what? Spoilers. We're, we're not going to talk about that. But yeah, everybody falls in love with it. And um, I think it's created massive tidal waves in the industry. And without naming any names here, I've, uh, I've had the opportunity over the past couple of days to talk to some people some developers, some game designers, uh, and companies that a lot of you guys know and, and probably play the games for. And a lot of them are just like, tips, dude, we're thinking about this now. Like, we're thinking about MMOs. Like, actual developers saying, everybody's looking at this. Everybody's watching Classic WoW. Everyone wants to see how successful this is going to be. Because if it is successful long term, then you bet your bottom, you're going to see millions and millions of dollars reinvested back into a genre that I believe has so much potential uh, still and has barely scratched the surface of what it could be, which is a tremendous sign. This is like the dream come true. Like I will tell you, Classic WoW so far has been a dream come true. It's been exactly what we hoped it would be so far. And this is just the beta, man. This is just the freaking beta. A beta of a 15-year-old game is topping numbers on Twitch or getting at least in the top three or four games on Twitch consistently for two weeks. That is insane. A 15-year-old game. And the era of Battle Royales and the era of MOBAs and the era of esports and just chatting and IRL streaming and ASMR streams. In this era, you have a 15-year-old game dumping on all of these other genres and other titles it is absolutely mind-blowing. And I think one of the reasons why Classic WoW has been doing so great on Twitch isn't just because of its gameplay, but it's because of its community and social-oriented design. Classic WoW, simply put, gives streamers and viewers the opportunity to play together and play against each other in a very fluid and open environment. It's exciting when you see Asmongold versus Soda Poppin in a world PvP event, and when you can actually participate in that event if you play on their server. It's exciting to see, you know, the rank one, you know, multi-time glad streamers of Retail WoW go head-to-head -head with the private server heroes, the vanilla WoW heroes, you know, that, that are really good on Astarius and Northdale and stuff like that. It's amazing to see these two communities clash. And it's something that's really, really watchable. I mean, you want to see what happens. Yeah, how's Asmongold going to do against Soda? How's, you know, Van Ruki going to do against Snuts? And, and all these names that, that we know throughout the community. Um, it just, it translates into a very interesting and, and very fun, watchable experience. And honestly, a lot of drama. <laughs> and uh, as we know on Twitch, drama translates into a lot of views. Um, and thankfully, it's clean drama in terms of like, I, I hope there's no bad blood, you know, here or there. But it just, it, it, Classic WoW generates a lot of very interesting, um, watchable experiences that a lot of other games don't generate. And these experiences tend to be very community figure centric, which, again, is very unique to the MMORPG genre. The reason why I'm talking about this right now, the reason why I'm talking about Twitch figures and all that is because one of the biggest metrics that games developers look at nowadays when they're designing their games is how well that game that's being designed could translate to Twitch. Uh, there are games like Subnautica, for example. I believe, I think it's Subnautica. I, I think that's the one um, that were designed with Twitch in mind where, you know, you know, part of the game is to generate a lot of random experiences that, you know, could engage audiences and, you know, 
bait reactions from streamers that, you know, create for more, you know, uh, immersive watch experiences, with ho which hopefully translates into purchases. Uh, a lot of game developers nowadays are designing their games knowing that they're going to be streamed on Twitch. And to see that MMORPGs have that kind of Twitch friendly, you know, you know, gameplay, that's going to be a big reinforcing factor for a lot of these developers if they decide to reinvest back in this genre, which again is very, very good for the future. I've said this many times in previous videos or on stream. Um, I love Classic WoW. It's my favorite game of all time. I'm looking forward to playing it for years and years and years to come. But if you want my honest opinion, my true dream, my true wish is to see a new MMO come out with the same design philosophies and principles of Classic WoW, but new and innovative and something that's, you know, on the standards of 2019 or 2020 or 2023, if, if it ever comes out in these next couple of years. I think a new MMO like Classic WoW, but modern with a totally new adventure, I think that's the real goal. And I think that's something that Classic WoW is laying the foundation for, which is very, very exciting. And yeah, man, like I remember when World of Warcraft came out, how much I loved it, how much bigger of an upgrade it was coming from RuneScape in 2001 for me. Like, you know, it was just, it was so good. It was so, so, so good. But I also remember 14, 13 years ago thinking to myself, man, I wonder how, you know, 10 years from now, the MMOs are going to be like. And unfortunately, we never, that wish never came true. But if Classic WoW is successful, if it's as successful as we all hope it to be, I have a feeling that when we ask that question today, 10 years from now, if the industry is even remotely competent, 10 years from now, we will start seeing things. Maybe five years from now, we'll start seeing things that will absolutely blow our minds. Great, immersive, socially engaging MMORPGs that also have some cool modern innovations of the modern era, larger worlds, you know, just more immersive environments. Um, you know, you you let your imagination run wild. Um, seeing something like that would be very, very cool. But yeah, overall impact on Twitch in the industry, Classic WoW is having one. The reverberations are being felt. Game designers are already talking about this. Behind the scenes, things are going crazy. Let's hope that Classic continues the success, not only during the beta, but also up until and several months and years after launch as well. And maybe that generates something even bigger in the games industry over the next, you know, three to five years or so. But that's pretty much it on that subject. Guys, thank you for bearing with me uh, during this nearly one hour rant. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys want to tune into the Classic WoW Beta, I'll plug this one more time. You can watch me play it live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. Link is in the description below. If you guys want to keep up with the community in terms of discussing the Classic WoW Beta, you can check me out on Discord. Join our Discord channel. That's where we all hang out in the after hours. And yeah, we're having a lot of fun, interesting conversations about Classic WoW there. If you want to keep up with Classic WoW content, news, and updates, you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash tipsoutbaby, also in the description. And uh, finally, if you want to catch more Classic WoW videos right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash tipsoutbaby, hit that sub button, hit that you know thumbs up button or whatever. And uh, yeah. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next one, too. So, hopefully, this is a good welcome back to all of us after that, you know, 12 days or so without any videos. A lot more videos to come soon, guys. Um, I'll be moving again, in, you know, over the course of these next several days. So, it might be a little bit hazy here and there. But once I get settled in, we'll get back to the YouTube, hopefully, stronger than ever. But aside from that, guys, have a wonderful day, fellas. I'll see you guys on Twitch. And as always, tips out, baby.